Hello, everybody. Good morning and good afternoon and evening. Depends on where you are. My name is Ed Liu, uh, Haiku Territory Manager from Sydney, Australia. And also with us, we have Rahu Shin, our systems engineer. Um, let's wait for another minute uh, for uh, more people to join. So I will just mute myself and be right back in a minute. Thank you. Hello again, everyone. Uh, let's get started. So today's session, we will talk about our backup solution, Haiku Protege for Office 365. So the format of this presentation and tech talk, it is that I will go for about 10 to 15 minutes um, of our value prop and also what are the focuses and um, differentiators of our solution. Then I will hand over to Rahul for a tech talk plus a demonstration. Before I start, um, I would uh, want to highlight and introduce Haiku for your guys online who has never heard of us. Basically, we are a multi-cloud a backup and recovery uh, com solution company. Our headquarters in Boston, we have a number of years in the backup industry where we have actually provide uh, writing backup software for other T1 vendors. We have different of products for different needs on the market. Doesn't matter if it's on prem or it's running on a cloud. We have uh, uh, we are one of the uh, seven uh, worldwide strategic global partner for Nutanix. Also, we are a strategic partner and for Google Cloud and Microsoft Azure. With the Net Promoter Score, we current today is 91 plus, and that's really amazing results. As you know, <clears throat> with the Net Promoter Score, it measures like the customer's uh, satisfaction, uh, how happy they were dealing with us uh, pre-acquisition of our products, including the post sales support as well. So it's actually the entire uh, life cycle of the usage of the product. Um, and how likely they would want to introduce to their friends and colleagues and so forth. It is the highest uh, uh, score uh, in the backup industry today. Now, it doesn't matter if your workload is running on a prem at the moment today, or it's in a journey to the cloud, or actually it's in a hybrid cloud environment, we do have all uh, the right uh, a protection solution for you 
right, regardless uh, what are you planning uh, to do later or today. Uh, for example, if you have Nutanix today or VMware, Windows, Linux, on-prem, we do have the products for that. Or even you are in a hybrid cloud environment, we also have a solution, a protege that allows you to uh, protect your workload regardless it's on-prem or it's running on the cloud as well. If you have all your workloads migrated to the cloud already, fantastic. We also have our purpose built backup recovery uh, natively uh, built into the uh, cloud platform for your data protection. So as you know, our today's uh, focus is to uh, uh, look at how can we actually protect and backup uh, Office 365. Uh, needless to say, I guess everyone on the call understands uh, what is Office 365. The reason why I have this slide here, I just want to highlight uh, the services that we focus right uh, around the Office 365 backup and recovery. So why do you need a, why do you need backup uh, for Office 365? I think it is just important as like you know your other personal files. Um, it is actually protect you against accidentally deleted email, or if it's a human error, or if there's a malicious attack, or for any reason that you want to restore, right, an email that has been lost. And of course, for some companies, uh, this is uh, more for compliance. For example, uh, you have like uh, the Finance Institute, or if you're a government body, that your Office 365, it must be backed up for compliance reason as well as from the legality perspective, right? Uh, for health, especially where they need to, and legal, uh, where they need to retain their data up to 99 years, right? Now, one of the most important thing, I guess, like, you know, Microsoft is, uh, is uh, everybody's like, uh, 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 listen to them is that, even themselves recommend that, right? It is recommended that, that you would need a third party app and services to protect your Office 365 while they try their best to make it available 24 seven, but that's only high availability, not a backup, right? A backup means that I want to be able to restore a mail email that I deleted, you know, six months ago. How do I restore about that? And that is important. The five core values and value proposition that we bring onto the table are for Office 365, automatic backup as a service, right? Total 360 degree protection of your Office 365, flexible uh, recovery options. That's quite important for, for everybody. Uh, compliance and vigilant around the clock. How do we actually maintain this uh, compliance? And of course, uh, how do we secure at every level, right? Let's go through uh, points number one, automated backup as a service. It is because our solution, it is a true SaaS solution. When you just go onto Microsoft um, uh, Marketplace, as an, an, an uh, I'm sorry, basically it's a subscription where you just go to our, uh, our portal and um, you do not need any installation, maintenance and, and so forth. It is a solution that's a natively built into the platform. So you don't need to do anything. You can have your time back and look after something else, right? Where your time is most important. And you don't need to worry about the sizing of your storage or the sizing of like, you know, the, from an architecture per, uh, point perspective, how big is your, uh, your, your, uh, your backup instance needs to be. It is all handled by Haiku. Zero backup management. Um, and because it's all automated, right? Uh, from the point that you add your Office 365 organization into our Haiku uh, portal, everything is automated, including scheduling and backup um, of the uh, target provisioning as well. And I'll talk more about that later. The total 360 uh, protection of uh, 365, as uh, what we have mentioned earlier, we will protect and back up all your important services within the Office 365. And this includes emails, SharePoint, OneNote, OneDrive, Teams, Groups, Calendar, and so forth. Uh, the continuous backup, 
right? As what we said earlier, uh, it's all automated. We will provide a continuous backup of your emails by doing journaling, right? So every email that comes in, right, it will be actually captured. And your OneDrive will be backed up once a day and three times a day for SharePoint. Unlimited data retention, especially what I mentioned before, for, for, for insurance companies, for legal, for, for health, where they need to keep um, up to 99 years uh, for their uh, data and record. Uh, we provide that, right? So the customers have a peace of mind where they don't need to think about, oh, gosh, it's running out of storage. I need to buy more. How much do we need? And so forth, right? We provide unlimited data retention, right, for your backup. And by default, our storage actually runs on AWS S3. Now, the reason behind that it is, as you understand, it is also it's always a best practice to keep your backed up data separate, right, from your origin. For example, if you are backing up your C drive to your C drive, and if your C drive is gone, all your data and backup are gone as well. So you want to prefer that backup to an alternative destination, right? And that's why we chose AWS as free uh, for the uh, backup target. Flexible recovery, and that's quite important, right? So it doesn't matter what you want to recover. It could be an email or attachment or contact and so forth. Um, we have the option for you as how you want to recover, what you want to recover. And this can be down to a file level, a site level, or at a chat level, right, in terms of a granular uh, recovery. And of course, our solution also provides a fenced search uh, engine for your recovery, so you can actually search on what you want to recover instead of like, you know, browsing through this huge uh, 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 structured email um, uh, or OneDrive of, uh, to find what you want to um, uh, uh, recover. So we provide a search uh, facility for you to make your job much easier for recovery. Compliant and vigilant around the clock. Now, uh, this is quite important, especially uh, for uh, companies like, you know, government space, or insurance, or legal. Uh, where everything is captured, right? Uh, it has provide it provides a detailed audit trail of all the emails, right? Your the backup emails, searches, downloads, any deletions, and stuff and more. And also, we can suspend email expiration, so so that uh, when your uh, once the backup is done, right, uh, you cannot expire that backup. You would keep for as long as like you know you like up to ninety nine years. Okay, and this is uh, more from uh, more for the uh, uh, the another provides another level of protection. Yeah, where you cannot delete your or expire your backup. It keeps constant uh, track of your email correspondence. So from the this is more for uh, analytics and for um, for legal um, reasons, uh, where we actually keep uh, tracking uh, how the emails have been sent to who based on, like, could be on a keyword or, or based on uh, or, or on a, uh, a recipient, we keep a track of how these are actually uh, uh, tracked, right? Stay secure at every level, and this is quite important, right? Um, because your data needs to be compliant, um, especially um, uh, at a storage level, there's a lot of people ask, asking, hey, look, you know, does this compliance with this? Does this compliance with particular uh, uh, law, law in, uh, you know, in your country? So we provide all sort of different levels of uh, security, encryption, right? We provide that at rest, and these are different of encryption um, uh, profiles that we do support today. Uh, backup target compliance, right? And also, the uh, Haiku solution compliance with um, a lot of um, different uh, laws across uh, the globe. So just a recap of the five core values that we bring onto the table, automated backup or protection as a service, right? Um, the total 360 protection of 365, right? It's continuous uh, backup of your emails, uh, SharePoint, also OneDrive, uh, very uh, 
uh, a, a flexible recovery, right? Uh, different options that you want, such as like then to attachment level, email level, or chat level, or a site level for your SharePoint and so forth. Uh, for companies that are more keen uh, for a compliance uh, reason, uh, we have a lot of different compliance and 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 and, and vigilant around the clock uh, for your for your data. And of course, um, this also applies to uh, 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 the uh, different office security uh, levels um, for whether your data is on the uh, is sitting on HiQ or sitting on the AWS, uh, or looking for some, some something like uh, the Australian uh, uh, privacy law. We all comply with that. So. Uh, with that, I'm going to hand over to, uh, before I hand over to Rahul, I want to talk about the licensing. So it's a per user licensing model that it covers basically almost everything you need to back up for Office 365. This includes Mail, SharePoint, OneDrive, Teams, Groups, uh, what else, a Calendar, Tasks, right, as well, unlimited storage as well, right? Now, um, the main benefit of our solution is that it's a true SaaS solution. You just go and subscribe, and basically everything will be automatically backed up, right? You don't need to worry about storage sizing and how it's going to work and so forth. So with that, I'm going to hand over to Rahul. And also on the chat, I will leave my contact details there. Now, so in case you have any questions you want to ask uh, either Rahul or myself, you can send me email. Uh, of course, uh, you can ask us any time during our session as well. So use the uh, chat window on your uh, right-hand side of the screen. So with that, thanks, guys. I'm going to hand over to Rahul now. Rahul, please take over. Hey, thanks, Eddie. Thanks for the excellent presentation. Let me just spin up my labs and bring up my screen. Uh, okay, perfect. So I believe you can see my screen, correct? Yes. Yes, I can. Okay. Thanks. Uh, thanks, guys. Thanks, everyone, for joining today's session. Uh, today, we're going to talk, uh, emphasize more on Office 365 backups. Now, whenever we talk about backups and protecting uh, our data within the organization, uh, the first thing that comes into the mind is uh, I need to define my infrastructure. I need to you know, buy some licenses. I need to deploy it on some servers. I need to do some sizing for my backups, depending on how many users I have, and so many things, right? So we just want to cut down this complexity with Haiku's uh, Haiku Protege for Office 365. Uh, Haiku Protege of, for Office 365 is offered as a true SaaS. Now, what does it really mean by SaaS? Is we, we're just trying to cut down the complexity for the end customer, wherein you don't have to do any sizing, which is the most critical thing that you can think of. You don't need to deploy anything. You don't need to maintain or upgrade any infrastructure. All these hassles is taken care of by Haiku, and you just use this as a true service, which means now you can simply subscribe to Haiku Protege for Office 365 and just follow the instructions for the subscription. Uh, Haiku creates a login for the administrator, sends out, say, login information, and then you simply sign in as an administrator. Okay, Once you sign in as an, as an administrator, this is the login window or, or the you know, landing page that you will see for the Haiku Protege for Office 365. And within the solution, everything is automated. You don't have to do anything except just one thing, which is you need to add your backup. Okay, you need to add your Office 365 domain. So as soon as you log into the Haiku Protege uh, for Office 365 backup, the only thing you need to do is click on Add Backup. And now you can sign in as an administrator and just add your Office 365 domain. And once this domain gets added, all the users running underneath that Office 365 will be auto discovered by Haiku and it will be presented right up on the screen. Okay. The another thing is as soon as the user gets discovered, uh, it gets starts getting backed up automatically because everything is truly automated, truly offered as a service. So what all elements do we back up? We we back up pretty much everything that you can think of, every single service that's running within the Office 365. We back up your emails. Now with emails, the great thing that Haiku does is we have an email journaling process, which means it's a real-time backup for your emails. So as soon as you send it on email, you receive an email, 
let's say I send an email to you, someone, and I sort of delete that from a sent item or deleted item that the, the things are still getting backed up in real time. So because of the journaling process, it's a real time backup. And that's really important for uh, any organization when it comes to emails, which is, you know, uh, which is that that's really important. Now, apart from that, we also back up OneDrive, we, we back up contacts, task calendar, which gets backed up once a day. And we believe that's the, uh, that's the, you know, a good amount of time we, we, we run a backup once a day. That's an efficient way of backing it up. Uh, with regards to SharePoint groups or teams, it gets backed up three times a day. So that's the default. Uh, uh, that's a default time frame which where the backup runs uh, within your Office 365. Now, there's no policies you need to create. There's no targets that you need to create. Everything is simply automated fully. You know, it's like a plug and play. That's what usually we call it as like you subscribe and everything gets, starts getting backed up and you don't need to worry. You don't need any specialized team to monitor things and make sure you your backups are running, your infrastructure is upgraded, all these things. And that's the simplicity we have to offer to our to our users. Now, when it comes to restores, you have plenty of options because in terms of backups, everything is automated. Everything gets backed up automatically as soon as you add your domain. But when it comes to recoveries, uh, let's have a quick look at the recovery aspect. But in terms of recovery, you have uh, you can restore the entire mailbox. That's pretty much the same as everyone does. Like it, it just allows you to restore the uh, entire mailbox when you happen to do a restore you can select a time range you can select whether you wish destination would you like to you know run this restore back into the same default folder or you just want to use another directory or just create a new one for yourself and then hit restore at the bottom so that's a pretty straightforward process uh, we also allow the users to download the entire mailbox as an eml or psd if required or you can also migrate it into another mailbox if that's a requirement as well uh, under more, you would have two options. Uh, the first one is info, which basically gives you the last information about the last backups, the amount of emails, uh, the total size of your emails backed up, and all these things, right? And that's what it is. We also have an option called deactivate, which means uh, you no longer want to back up a specific user for some reason. Let's say the user is no longer working for the organization. You just want to stop backing up that user mailbox. You simply go and deactivate that and you repurpose that license for another one or a, a new person who's going to join this you know, organization at all. So this real uh, re reusage of the license is something that you can achieve and do from using the deactivate option. Now, having said that, we also do help users do a individual email recovery or granular recovery of your emails. And the process is, is just the same. You just have to get into the email accounts and let's say this is the this is the email which our user has deleted. They come back to the you know admin teams and hey, look, I my specific email has been deleted. Can you help me restore that? Yes, we can. We can. So if you you select the email and then you simply migrate, you simply restore the, the three options that you can or user can choose to and they can download as an email or PSD. Now you also have an option to tag some emails. Tagging an email, which means uh, these are some kind of important emails which you don't want to get expired or deleted accidentally. So you, you tag an email, and this can come in handy uh, when it comes to legal hold as well. I'll explain that how it comes, uh, how it integrates with legal hold and compliance as we move ahead. But that's the that's the whole point. And with OneDrive, uh, with SharePoint, with Teams, we also do a data versioning, which means if you choose to download or restore, we have a previous version along with the latest one. And the same thing goes with the restores as well. So that's pretty much uh, from the restore aspects. And in terms of SharePoint or groups or teams, you back up your entire you know, cloud sites. You With your teams, you can restore your chats and everything. So that is something is is completely possible. These are like different options that you can run and you, know, you can have a restore uh, from in terms of groups or teams. Now, the second thing that comes is the uh, the advanced search. So with the advanced search, this basically allows you to you know dig out your old stuff across your emails, OneDrive, and SharePoint. Now with the advanced search, you can simply head on to email accounts and you say you know one of the email accounts is like Bella, and you can find with some keywords. 
Now, because we do indexing, the data is indexed right from the beginning across the board. And if I know that, okay, there's something called mine, I need to search. If you look at the search uh, functionalities, it's really instantaneous because we index the data. Okay, that's, that's again, a, a very important thing. And then once the data is, is found, I can simply choose what I need to do. Do I need to download? Do I need to restore, migrate, or simply type an email for my future use? So that is something uh, the advanced search can help you. And the next thing goes is I would like to jump into the insights. Now, the insights shows you uh, the, it, it rather gives you the information based on the backup emails. Okay, so if you go into insights, it has something called relationship statistics and productivity. It, it basically shows you a relationship based on the backed up emails, your email volumes. Now, if you look at the relationship, it gives you plenty of information of, of who has sent emails to whom, the amount of emails and who, right? So, and the stats would give you, uh, you know, the details about the email volumes and storage, more frequently contact, uh, contacted accounts, attachment types and everything. And the productivity is like how often during uh, work the emails has been sent, how fast they've been responded, the most active email users and so on and so forth. So it's, it's really good to have a you know clear picture about the work-life balance of your employees as well. So that's, that's more of an insight. Now, the most important thing is the compliance, which is, which everyone would like to have. You know, the compliance uh, helps you in, in you know, offering several tools like auditing, uh, setting up your retention policies, legal hold, discovery, uh, tagging, review process. Now, one thing I, I, I didn't mention at the beginning of the session is, uh, which Eddie uh, certainly has mentioned, is uh, we, we offer unlimited backup retention, right? Now, there might be some, some cases where, you know, a user might not be, you know, willing to have an unlimited backup retention, but they just want to, you know, have a, a specific retention for the backup. So that is something a user has a full control all. So let's assume they, they want to back up their, um, their, their emails for a specific time frame. So they can simply head on to, you know, just get into compliance, get into retention policies. And this is where you can apply your own user-defined policy. So all you have to do is create new, you know, what, whatever name, to which particular group that you want to apply is it for everyone for a department or specific email and then you choose an email for example harry i don't want to you know i just want to use this uh back of this user for and retain the data for three years so for example i can do that i can say agree and then say save so that way you can you can have full control on the retention and as you can see on my screen uh for my sales it's, it's for set for five years for management or the C-level guys, it's set for 10 years, HR is for seven years and so on and so forth. So that is something definitely that is possible uh, within the retention policies. Now, coming back to the compliance and the e-discovery. Now, e-discovery is uh, it's based on the email advanced search. The look and feel is exactly the same what you have seen in the advanced search and you can add some more fields to it. There are plenty of options that a user can add and you know expand their search capabilities as well. And um, E-discovery expands the advanced search in terms of alerting, tagging, and review process. And that's one of the results you can apply tax to search the results, mark them for review. They can, so many things that you can do. So one thing I would like to show is, uh, you know, I have created a, a confidential search email, um, e-discovery search. Okay, something like any of my internal employee who's trying to send an email to their uh, personal email address for some reason, like Gmail, Outlook, there you can add it as many as you want. With some and or conditions, you can flip this and you know make it as per your requirement. Probably the my safe search has some something like the keyword which contains some a keyword called confidential and an attachment which has a, a you know a, a, a name convention with some something called its contract. Now what happens is uh, it really helps you to keep a track of what's happening within the organization. So if someone's trying to mess around and you know, trying to send some confidential information, uh, that can be easily tracked, you know, which is the most important things. So you, at least you could know who has done or what sort of fishy activities. 
Now, once the saved source is created, it gets connected to the alerts. Now in the alerts, you can see uh, the confidential breach, the Bella is my global admin, by the way. So she's getting notified. You can turn it on or off. So that's that's a, a switch that you just need to turn it on or off. If this is turned on and any user who's trying to send an email to their personal email address, which fulfills the criteria, like it has an attachment with some keywords called confidential and a, you know, attachment with word called contract, Bella would instantaneously get a notification that X user has tried to send some you know, email which they shouldn't be doing. So it, it really keeps you, you know, help you be vigilant, help you keep a track of what's going on within the, uh, within the organization. Now, the next thing is about the legal hold, uh, which is really, really important. So with the legal hold functionality, it allows you the emails to be marked for legal hold, preventing, uh, preventing the deletion until the legal hold is removed, like reviewed and until the uh, legal hold is removed. Now, emails are retained indefinitely once placed on the legal hold, uh, superseding any previously set retention policies. Now, emails under the, let's say the emails or messages under legal hold cannot be deleted by any retention policy unless the legal hold is removed, right? And this can be applied across your accounts, your departments, or pretty much all your messages as well. Now, so, as you can see on the screen, there's like some of the legal holds which has been applied for this messages, right? And if you need to give access to some third party person, for example, a lawyer who wants to review this process, uh, we have a complete user management profile which you can go up here on the right hand top. And then you can just define and create a user by, let's say, create an add user, just add the email address. And make sure you give him assign a data protection officer role, which means the person who is assigned a data protection officer role can only see uh, the emails which has been tagged for legal and compliance hold. He just can't see anything else. Okay, that's that's equally important. And then apart from that, um, we also have some service recovery capabilities as well. But once the person logs in with the data protection officer role, he can go up here uh, in the legal hold, and they can just review all these things all the data which they want to see and you know, all the information that they want to capture. So all the audit logs, header information, all everything is captured in real time. So they can just simply find the details. Once the uh, information is, is captured, they can simply log out and you know, that's, that's how they complete the review process. Once the review process, the emails uh, are back to the normal, the legal hold gets removed. So that's a legal process that's that you can see on the screen. In terms of auditing logs, uh, audit logs can be used for several audit operations like email review, uh, restore downloads, review actions, uh, user configuration, compliance options, and so many things. So we do audit log across pretty much across the board. Like you can find out your information about your uh, messages and audit logs, your user activity, system logs, and everything. So if I have to say, for example, I need to find something for, I, I may not define a range, I can say for Bella and say search. Now, if you look at the search, it's again, it's pretty quick because of the indexing of the data. And then I can, I can find this information and you know I can, I, I just get to know what, what things this person has done, the IP address, location, the activity type, and then for, for my internal use, if I need to just capture this data, you also have options to download it, this, all this information in the form of CSV file. Same thing works across user activity as well. So I can see, I can uh, we just enable the safe search for confidential breach, we disable the alert. This things got captured in real time. So that's how things work. And the same thing goes across the system logs activity as well, right? So that's the... Uh, that's the auditing logs, and we audit every single information across the board. Uh, tags is something we which you have, which I've already shown you. So you can simply tag your emails for any sort of legal compliance hole, or if you think that this e emails has to be tagged, which cannot be deleted or expired by any means. The system status is if someone's wondering, but do I see the the backup? Uh, progress or you know all my backup status. So you simply head on to sim system status and you go to backups and you will find all your details up there. So you will find all your details about the backups. And these are like real-time backups, the journal link in place. Uh, so 
everything is up, up there. Uh, if someone wants to dig out their old emails, we have an option for email attachments, which is kind of a repository for all your attachments. And you can simply find uh, a keyword. You can enter a keyword and say, this is what I need to find. I know there's a you know attachment with a keyword called alpha, and then I just simply find this and I, I can download this as well. Okay, so that's that's the whole thing. And um, in terms of, we also offer uh, self-service capabilities to the end user. So you can assign uh, you know different levels of permissions to the end user within the organization and make sure you you know assign or, or help them with the self-service capabilities as well. So that was all about the uh, Haiku protege of Office 365. It's uh, just to summarize uh, a quick summary about what we have uh, spoken is, the first thing is it's offered as a true service, uh, backup as a service in a SaaS, which means no deployment for the end users, no infrastructure, highly scalable and dynamic. So you have 10 users today, you have 100 tomorrow and maybe 10,000 later. We just scale as per your requirement. You don't have to you know, size your infrastructure. You don't have to size your storage. Uh, you offer unlimited backup retention. So that's equally important. Uh, we back up every single element of your office, so your emails, your OneDrive, your SharePoint groups, Teams, contacts, tasks, calendars. Uh, we offer you unlimited uh, backup retention. And also from a recovery perspective, you have all the options. You can restore the entire mailboxes, uh, individual granular recoveries of your single emails for your SharePoint, for your Teams chats. Uh, we do index the data. So the search capability, search functionalities is really, really fast. Uh, for your email, especially uh, with the journaling in place, your emails gets captured in real time, which is you know really important. With the compliance, we help you with the legal and compliance hold, taggings, uh, review process, alerting mechanism, and all. Insights give you really good information, which is artificial intelligence-based relationship of who has sent to what, uh, what amount of data has been backed up in the last emails, the work-life balance of your employee, and the stats, and you know all these things. So that's all we have for you uh, to, for in today's uh, session, guys. I hope you have enjoyed the session, and you must have you know learned something new today. Uh, feel free to reach out to us in case uh, if you want to have. Uh, a one-on-one -on -one demo if you have any questions and queries later and if you have any questions right now make use of the chat window and you know just just pop up your questions and we'll be more than happy to answer those thank you guys thanks rahul um we do actually have a few questions on the chat window do you mind to go for them more okay let me just check them So the first question is uh, first mailboxes. the shared mailboxes. Yeah. So with the shared mailboxes, uh, you don't need a license for your shared mailboxes unless it has to be licensed on the Office three sixty five portal. Uh, we 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 don't require a shared mailbox. I mean, if you want to back up a shared mailbox, we don't need to require an additional license. Only if it's it has to be licensed based on certain capacity on the Microsoft Office three sixty five. Then yes, it has to be licensed with a hyper as well. Uh, so can we get a copy of the presentation deck? Yes, you can. Now, is it deployed on premises or is it entirely managed by high? Oh, good question. So it's a, it's like it's been, you know, stressing all, all throughout my presentation. It's all offered as a service by high So there's no deployment a customer has to do or a person has to do on premises, it's all entirely managed by Haiku. So we deploy, we manage, we maintain, upgrade, everything is handled and the customer just uses at as at a service. Okay. Um, hey, Rahul, do you mind stop sharing your screen and I'm gonna share uh, our contact details so that, that sure. if anyone wants to contact us later, yep. uh, they sure. email to us directly. Thank you. Yep, go, go, uh, please go through these um, uh, questions. Okay, so this is a very focused on email. Office 365 is more than email. What about st other stats, compliance model? Can be cut out of the SharePoint. Uh, so we back up everything. We back up your emails, SharePoint, Teams. Uh, compliance is across the board for your emails, for for your Teams, and you know all your data. Uh, but again, we, we can reach out, we can you know have a one-on-one -on -one conversation to 
deep dive into this in, and try and understand what's what is you know what is really um, the question all about if that doesn't answer your question or two so please uh eddie have you posted the the email address um i can't see where i can actually post that so that's why i want to share my screen uh, but i'm having some issues i'm sharing my screen onto a uh, bright talk onto the platform okay. so uh, do you mind with your can you share your screen and type in our email address on your screen okay just a second So do, I mean, while I'm doing that, uh, you know, just feel free to ask your questions if you have anything up there. Let me uh, try on my end as well. Sorry, yeah, guys, no I'm just I'm almost there. That's great, guys. I can see a lot of questions coming in, so uh, keep asking. Uh, we will be able to get back to you. So I see the there's one more question that has popped up. What if I only want to back up a group of people and not all the people on the organization? Uh, good one. So if you have a specific subset of users which needs to be backed up in your organization and not everyone, uh, you can definitely we can definitely achieve that by creating an active directory groups. So you can create a specific group and you add the users which needs to be backed up uh give us the name of the active directory group and we can do the necessary arrangements uh, at our end and so that only that particular group is visible in the portal and you can start backing up those specific users can we get a copy back up on print So I believe can we get a co back can we get a copy back on prem? Is that something we is that you need a copy of a slide deck for the on-prem solutions? I'm not sure. I think the question uh, is that and I think the question is that when you restore restore something like you know other as attachment or uh, mm, okay. file on one drive, can you bring it back to on prem? I think that's the uh, that's the I okay got it. So you you cannot you cannot restore the data back into the on prem because it's offered as a SaaS. We don't deploy any infrastructure. So and again, there's a lot of egress cost involved. So probably not may not be a right move if you know we are considering a big amount of data being transferred from your office to back to on prem. So I guess in that case, the alternative would be restore it back onto the cloud, and then from the cloud, you do a copy manually back onto on-prem. Is that correct? I guess. Yes. There's again, a lot of egress, uh, you know, cost that is involved. So we try to be cautious when you try to, you know, transfer the bigger chunk of data from, from cloud back to on-prem. Mm -hmm. Can we answer this question? If a team is removed, can we restore from a backup? Yes, you can. If a team is removed, can we restore from a backup? Yes, the data is backed up. So anything, any data which has been backed up already uh, is there at your disposal for any sort of restoration purpose. So right. yes, that, that can be done. Okay, good. I'm just going through the question, see. If a user, so if the user is removed, Sorry, go from ahead. active. If a user is removed from Active Directory, do we lose all emails, etc., already backed up with Haiku? So no, the answer is no. You 
I mean, the, if even if a user is removed, let's say he leaves the organization, the data which has been backed up, even if you deactivate a user, the data which has already been backed up is still intact and still available for you to for any sort of frustration purpose. Okay. Um... So, what do you mean egress cost? What are the extra? Usually, talking about high key protege, when you want to do a restore, it just restores within the you know uh, Microsoft Office three sixty five uh and infrastructure we you cannot restore it back to on-premises if you let's say if you want to say that i want to restore some emails back to my uh, on-prem storage that's not an option because uh it's it's like i said it's offered as a service uh, we manage everything and we don't deploy any infrastructure on your on-prem nor we have a storage on-prem or any connectivity so that way uh, you won't be you know, you wouldn't be having an option to restore your data back to on-prem. But we should be able to do this ourselves, not by having you to do this. Uh, I think this question is about um, backing up specific users. So as I've, as I've said earlier, you can create an active directory, uh, AD group, add the whatever number of users you want to back up. And then, because when you when you subscribe to the service uh, and you add your Office three sixty five, the entire domain gets visible. But if you want to back up a specific AD group, it's as a best practice, it is recommended that you just help us with the Active Directory name, and we just you know do a few things in the back end for you, and so that you don't see the all your Office three sixty five users, but you just see the specific specific AD group users, the list of users you know in that particular AD group. That way you can simply back up those users instead of having all the users visible on the portal. Okay. Rohu, are you able to share your screen with our contact details on it? Uh, I'm still trying to find a way. All right. It's okay. I am uploading um, another slide with our email address on it. Uh, sorry about that, guys. It is just that uh, with our platform that we're using, um, having some difficulties to uh, share our screen. So we have to upload the file onto the platform uh, before we can share anything. So this will take some time. So my apologies for that, guys. Uh, so it should be... Uh, I should be able to share the information with you. Oh, here we go. I think I need to give you guys a call. Yeah, please, please do, yeah. please do. Please feel free to reach out anytime. That's the email address up on the screen. Just feel free to reach out anytime. I'll be more than happy to jump on a call, answer your questions, run through a demo once again. Just feel free, you know, we're happy to help you anytime and by the way for you guys that wants a copy of your presentation uh do please uh, email me and i'll get in touch with you all right guys uh so there are no more questions on the screen coming through so thank you very much that uh, this concludes to our uh, tech talk backup solution protege for office 365 today thank you and have a nice day and a nice evening thank you bye, -bye. thank you guys bye Thank you. I have a question or a statement coming through. I think I will need to give you guys a call to set this up correctly. Okay, yep, yeah, please do. Our email address is on the screen, so please, uh, do please uh, send us an email. More than happy to help out. Thank you, guys. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.